Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera semua. My name is Nur Faizi bin Abdul Hamid. I wish you all in good health and stay safe wherever you are. Today, we are going to discuss on Chapter 9, Characteristics, Processing and Applications of Ceramics. These are the outlines of the chapter. First, we will look at the types of ceramics material and then we will look at the properties of this material the third one we will look at um, the processing method of ceramics and finally we will look at uh, the applications of ceramics material the learning objective of the chapter are uh, as shown in the screen at the end of the chapter the student is expected to be able to classify ceramic material and its application and then you should be able to determine the crystal structure of the ceramics the third one you should be able to describe various processing method for ceramics and glasses and finally the student is supposed to be able to explain the mechanical properties of ceramics and the corresponding mechanism of deformation, toughening and failure of ceramics. Ceramics material are inorganic and non-metallic material which are composed of metallic and non-metallic elements that are bonded by ionic and or covalent bond. For example, we look at aluminium oxide where the metal element of aluminium from group 3 is are bonded with three molecules of oxygen up until the past 60 years the most important material in this class were termed traditional ceramics where we use this material to make china porcelain brick style glasses and high temperature ceramics however a new generation of this material have evolved and the term ceramic has been taken on a much broader means to one degree or another this new material have rather dramatic effects on our life including in electronics, computer, communications, aerospace, and hosts of other industries rely on their use. In general, ceramics usually have good electrical and thermal insulation property. In terms of mechanical property, ceramics are hard and abrasive resistant. Ceramics also have high lead chemical stability and high melting point compared to metal. This is why ceramics are normally used in harsh environment applications and also in high temperature applications. However, ceramics are brittle and have low ductility and toughness compared to metals. Here we look at an example of the application of advanced ceramic in medical application. Due to deterioration of the original hip joint structure as can be seen here a patient may have difficulties to walk and this could cause a lot of pain due to ceramic abrasive resistant and chemically stable properties aluminum oxide or alumina have been used in the production of artificial hip joint in general Ceramic material can be divided into two groups. The first one, ceramics that are based on natural resources and industrial medium, often erroneously referred to as traditional ceramics. These are the ceramics that we use in making pottery. The other one are ceramics that are based on more advanced material, based on synthesized powders. And these are some examples of technical ceramics. In the first group, traditional ceramics, these are ceramics 
based on natural resources or industrial minerals, which includes a variety of products that are important in our daily lives, even to this day. Many of these products consist of three main components, which are silica, clay, and also feldspar. Porcelains, wall, and floor tiles, sanitary wares, tableware, etc. are such examples. Normal window and bottle glasses are also made using three main components, silica sand, limestone, and soda ash. For technical ceramics, all ceramics material produced from synthesized powders have been variously named as engineering ceramics, advanced ceramics, technical ceramic, and sometimes it is also referred to as fine ceramics. Such ceramic material include engineering components made from alumina, aluminum oxide, silicon nitride, silicon carbide, and etc., which are pure or almost pure chemically synthesized ceramic powders. Advanced glasses include optical fibers used in fiber optic telecommunications are synthesized to almost part per billion in purity. This figure shows us the wide spectrum of ceramic uses in our daily life. This includes the use of carbon or graphite in many applications, the use in building materials, flooring, abrasive, in cutting tools, structural shapes, glasses, for clay products, whiteware and potteries, electrical applications, and also in refractories or high temperature applications. In this part of the chapter, we will look at type of ceramic. In contrast to many other materials, ceramics are often classified based on their application. If you look at this figure, glasses, clay products, refractories, abrasive, cements are all categorized under traditional ceramics material. As for advanced ceramic material, it can be divided into oxides, nitrites, and carbide. Under each category, the applications can be seen as shown in the figure. One of the familiar use of ceramics material is the use of clay to make our daily use products. Clay has been used to make earthenware such as plant pot, stone wares such as coffee mugs, plates and bowl, porcelains to make table wares and souvenirs, to bone china, which is normally used to make high-end tableware and souvenirs. One of the clear advantages of ceramics material is in the use uh, for refractory applications. Because of the high melting temperature of ceramics material, Ceramic materials have been used in high temperature furnaces. Materials such as silica and alumina have been used extensively in this application. 
Perhaps the most popular use of ceramic is to make glasses. Glasses are non-crystalline silicates containing other oxide such as calcium oxide, sodium oxide, potassium oxide, and aluminum oxide. Mostly glasses are transparent and easy to fabricate or form. In this picture, we can see glasses are used in automotive application as well as for making window panels for buildings. A special type of glass which is called glass ceramics which are glasses which are transformed to crystalline state with fine polycrystalline grains. This type of material has high strength, high thermal conductivity, high thermal shock resistance and for example Pyrex is one of the uh, popular example of glass ceramics. In abrasive application because of the hardness and high wear resistance high toughness of ceramics material. Ceramics material have been used in tools manufacturing, for example, for grinding and polishing, for cutting and for oil grilling. All sorts of ceramics material have been introduced in these applications, such as using coated single crystal or polycrystalline diamonds or silicon carbide to make blades, using coated single or polycrystalline crystal on paper cloth to make sandpaper, and finally the use of loose abrasive grains in liquids for use of polishing. And finally, one of the major use of ceramic material is in making cements. In Malaysia, we can see that cement is one of the main material in the making of um, houses. Other than that, cements are also used in making um, concrete roads, bridges, buildings, and dams. Next, we will look at the structures of ceramics material. The properties of ceramic materials, like all other materials, are dictated by the type of atoms present, the type of bonding between the atoms, and the way the atoms are packed together. This is known as atomic scale structure. Most ceramics are made up of two or more elements. This is called a compound. For example, alumina, aluminum oxide, is a compound is a compound made up of aluminum atoms and oxygen atoms. Ceramic crystal structures are generally more complex than those for metal because they compose of at least two elements and often more. The atomic bonding in this material ranges from purely ionic to totally covalent. Many ceramics exhibit a combination of these two bonding types, the degree of ionic character being dependent on the electronegativities of the atoms. If you look at table 12.1, there are several ceramic materials with their respective percent of ionic character has been listed in the table. For those ceramic materials for which the atomic bonding is predominantly ionic bonding, the crystal structures may be thought of as being composed of electrically charged ion. instead of atoms. 
The metallic ions or cations are positively charged because they have given up their valence electron to non-metallic ions or anion which are negatively charged. For example, aluminium 3 plus is a cation whereas oxygen with the charge of 2 minus is an anion. Two characteristics of the component ions in crystalline ceramic materials influence the crystal structure. The first one is the magnitude of the electrical charge on each of the component ions. The second one is relative sizes of the cation and anion. In the first characteristic, the crystal must be electrically neutral. That is, all the cation positive charges must be balanced by an equal number of anion negative charges. The chemical formula of a compound indicates the ratio of cation to anion or the composition that achieves this charge balance. For example, in calcium fluoride, each calcium ion has a plus two charges associated with each fluorine which is a single negative charge. Thus, there must be twice as many fluorine ion as calcium ion which is reflected in the chemical formula of CaF2. The second criterion involves the sizes of ionic radii of the cation Rc and anions Ra. The metallic elements cation give up electron when ionized. Cations are smaller than anions. Therefore, the ratio of Rc over Ra is less than unity or Rc over Ra is always less than 1. Stable ceramic crystal structures form when those anions surrounding a cation are all in contact with that cation, as illustrated in figure 12.1. If you look at here, these two represent a stable crystal structure of ceramic because all of the cation in the mirror are directly in contact with the other anions. However, in this configuration, we can see that the cation in the middle here are not directly in contact with the anions. Thus, in this structure, it is called unstable coordination. In Table 12.2, several coordination number, cation anion radius ratio, and coordination geometry are listed for your reference. Now we look at the different types of ceramic crystal structure. The first one is what we call AX type crystal structure. Some of the common ceramic materials are those in which there are equal numbers of cation or A and the anions X. These are often referred to just AX compound where A denotes the cation and X is the anion. There are several different um, uh, examples of the um, crystal structure of this type of crystal structure. The first one is uh, sodium chloride, second one is cesium chloride, and the third one is in blend. We will look into the details after this slide. And each crystal structure is normally named after a common material that assumes particular structure. The first example of uh, 
reaction structure is the one that is most common. Uh, in this case, is sodium chloride or rock salt. The coordination number for this, um, for both anion and cation, is six. If you look at here, for example, the atom of natrium here, number one, are attached to another six of chlorine atom nearby. And the cation and anion ratio is between 0 0.414 to 0 0.732. This case structure is actually generated by FCC arrangement of anion okay, with one cation situated at the cube center and one at the center of each of the 12 cube ages. So the FCC uh, arrangement of anion is actually, if you look at this atom, the green one, here, over here, and the rest of the cubes, it forms like FCC arrangement of um, this type of atom. <clears throat> and then um, we also have one cation situated at the center of the cube, which is this atom, and one at the center of each of the 12 edges, like this, 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 this one, and this one, this one, this one, and another one over here. Oh, another one there. So, <clears throat> um, another ceramics that use this uh, crystal structure are uh, as such, right? And then the second type of AX crystal structure is what we call uh, cesium chloride structure. Uh, the coordination number is 8 for both ion type. If you look at this, it attached, if you look at this uh, cesium atom, it is attached directly to 8 of chlorine atoms. The anions are located at each of the corners. So the anion is this, this one is the anion <coughs> located at each of the corner of the cube and there is one um, cube at the center which is uh, the cation. This is the cation. If the change of ion, anions with cation and vice versa produce the same crystal structure and um, it is important to remember that this is it looks like BCC, but it is not actually a BCC because this atom at the center is not the same with the other atom, for example, this and this. So we cannot say this is exactly BCC structure. And the last step of um, AX structure that we are going to discuss today is what we call the zinc blend structure. Uh, the coordination number is 4. Um, all ions are tetrahedrically co coordinated. If you look at, for example, this zinc atom, it is attached tetrahedrally with the other sulfur atoms, which represented in yellow over here. This is called the zinc blend or spherulite structure after the mineralogical terms for zinc sulfide. All corner and face positions of the cubic cell are occupied by sulfur atom, while zinc atom fills interior uh, of the tetra, uh, uh, interior tetrahedral positions, if you look at this, okay? And then um, each of the zinc atom is bonded to four uh, sulfur atom, as I mentioned before, this is the zinc, and it is bonded with the other one, two, three, four, 
of uh, sulfur atoms. So most often, this type of uh, 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 structure, they are, uh, the atomic bondings are highly covalent in the compounds. And the other example uh, of ceramics that uses this uh, uh, crystal structure are uh, as such. Uh, the second type of uh, ceramic crystal structure is what we call the AMXP crystal structure. This happens when the charges on cation and anions are not the same. The meaning a compound can exist with a chemical formula of AMXP, where M and P is not equal to 1. The ionic radial ratio for this type of structure is 0 0.8, which according to table 12.2 give a coordination of 8. Okay. If you look at this, uh, for example, you can see that the coordination number uh, is 8. Calcium ions, in this case, we are going to review calcium fluoride structure, where calcium ions are positioned at the centers of the cube. So this is the calcium. And with fluorine ions at the corners. So these are the fluorine ions. And <clears throat> In this type of structure, one unit cell consists of eight cubes. And another example of uh, ceramics that uses this type of structure are uh, as such. The third ceramic structure that we are going to review is what we call the AMBNXP type structure. So it is also possible for ceramic compounds to have more than one type of cations. In this uh, case of structure, uh, two types of cation represented by A and B, their chemical formula is designated as AM, BN, and XP. So this one, these two, A and B, are the uh, cations. And X is the anion. For example, um, barium titanate with chemical formula of BATIO3 having both barium 2 plus and titanium 4 plus cation. This material has a proscribed crystal structure. So, proscribed is actually uh, a name of uh, ceramics. Uh, or we can also uh, call it calcium titanium oxide with chemical formula of CaTiO3. And the other example of this structure is magnesium aluminate. Table 12.4 is the summary of some common ceramic crystal structure. If you look at this, these are the AX type, AMXP type, and also the AMBNXP type. Um, it also um, in, uh, listed um, uh, some details of the uh, each of the crystal structures, such as uh, such a type and packing coordination numbers and some examples of the uh, ceramics material. Another group of ceramic structure, which is called silicates, composed of primarily of silicon and oxygen, which are the two most abundant elements in Earth's crust. Bulk of natural resources such as clays, rocks, sand, etc. Are comes under this group. 
basically silicates are based on SiO4 4 minus tetrahedron. If you look at this diagram here, each atom of silicon, which is at the center of here, is positioned at the center and bonded another four of uh, oxygen atom. These are the subgroup under silicates. The simplest silicate material is what we call uh, silica or silicon oxide, SiO2. In this structure, a 3D network that is generated when every corner of oxygen atom is shared by the adjacent tetrahedron. The ratio of Si to O is 1.2, sorry, 1 over 2, as indicated by the chemical formula. If these tetrahedra are arrayed in a regular and ordered manner, crystalline structure is formed. There are three primary polymorphic crystalline forms of silica, which is quartz, cristobalite, and tridamide. Another group of silicate is what we call silica glasses. Silica can also be made to exist as non-crystalline solid or glass. Having a high degree of atomic randomness, the material is called fused silica or vitreous silica. Silica glasses are the common inorganic glasses that are used for containers, windows, which have been added uh, with other oxides such as calcium oxide and natrium oxide. And the third one is uh, the one that we call the silicates. They are very silicate mineral where one, two, or three of the corner oxygen atom of the SiO4 tetrahedral are shared by other tetrahedral to form some rather complex structure. So these are some of the examples. In under the silicates, we have uh, simple silicates and layered silicates. Simple silicate is the most structurally simple ones involve isolated tetrahedral SiO4. But in layered silicates, a 2D sheet of uh, layered structure can also be produced by sharing of three oxygen ion in each of the tetrahedra. Such materials are called the sheets or layered silicates and their basic structure is the characteristic of clay. One of the most common clay materials is colonite and the structure is shown in figure 12.14. The last one is carbon. Although carbon does not really fall within any one of the traditional metal, ceramic, or polymer classification schemes, however, we choose to discuss this material in this chapter since graphite, one of the polymorphic form, is sometimes classified as ceramics. Furthermore, the crystal structure of Diamond, which is another poly, polymorph or, uh, of carbon, is similar to that of zinc blend. So, if you look at figure 2.6, so this is diamond structure, this is graphite, and this is what we call the C60 uh, molecule. And, and this is the uh, carbon nanotube. 